Hi right, guys, so we're here at Motorcycle Live for the 2020 release of all the hot new metal. We're gonna walk around the show, check out the bikes we're most keen to ride next year and see what we make of them. Yeah, let's roll. Yep. So this is the bike of 2020 for me. So it's Honda's new blade. It makes 215 horsepower, weighs 201 kg. It's got the most tech and spec of any blade that's ever come before it. You like it? It looks good, but do you reckon it's a BMW a bit? Oh. I, think, I think in terms of spec, it's got what it needs. You know, Honda have been holding back on releasing a new, all new model for quite a while now. And I dare say this is the bike we've all been waiting for. I don't think they would have just wheeled it out in hope of it being okay. Yeah. This is that bike to bring the blade back to the top. I think it's got the scope. On paper, it looks perfect. In reality. What about those wings? I like them. I yeah. think from a side profile, they're nice and, and hidden. When you get to the front, there they are. They're doing their job. Yeah. Can float your boat? Yeah, it looks gorgeous. I think like the, what they've done with the looks, even with the pipe, having like an acrobic pipe, it just, it looks clean, it looks finished. What about pricing? So there are two models. So there's the base model at 19,999, so just under 20 grand. Yep. And then there's the SP version, which basically is the same bike, but with Brembo Salima calipers and Olin's Gen 2 electronic suspension. That's 23,499. There's a few grand more. It's, it's, it's in the ballpark, isn't it? That's, that's the... Uh... Yeah, I think in reality, sports bikes, all bikes are getting more expensive. Yep. And the fact, the fact of it is, 20 grand is still a lot of money for the base model. 23,499 is even more, obviously. But when you compare it to the kind of machines it's up against, you know, if you yeah. buy yourself a V4S or something like that, Ducati, well, you're paying 25 upwards. Yeah. So I think considering you are getting the premium option yeah. for under 25 grand, it yeah. just is what it is. With the Bikes aren't tech. cheap anymore. Yeah. yeah. The amount of tech you get in and the amount of Gucci bits, like the Olin, the Brembo, like it pays for itself, doesn't it? I think you can justify it. Yeah. I'd be looking at the finance packages. Yeah. <laughs> you might be excited about the blade, but I'm excited about something a bit more naked. Yeah? Yeah. The Catty Street Fighter V4S. Firstly, it's a naked, it's got wings. Like that just just screams cool, doesn't it? Like, just look at it, it's beautiful. It's got 208 horsepower, 178 kilos, and it's gonna be a rocket ship. I think it's got all the right ingredients. I like the styling, I like the fact it's a little bit different. Yeah, I think this is quite a predictable model from Ducati. You know, they've got that V4 engine. Yeah, they've got they've the got, platform. They've got the technology, yeah. yeah. So it's just a case of adapting what they had, and, and here's the end result. And I'm really glad that they've come out with this. Yeah. Does it float my boat? It, I've got to ride it. I mean, it's yeah. it's such a statement bike, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's really aggressive. Like, it's got the full Brembo, it's got the full Olin's package, it's got the full Bosch IMU electronics. It's got the whole lot. It's got all the ingredients there to be one of the best bikes of 2020, in my opinion. But for 20 grand, I mean, this is no cheap naked bike, is it? That's the it's... thing. That, that's, that's the real calling point. Without riding it, straight away, like, just under 20 grand, and against the competition, it, it puts it in almost a class of its own price-wise. Well, it's a class of its own in performance as well. I mean, this is the most powerful naked on the market right now. Yeah. 208 horsepower, that's just mental. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's gonna wake up any high street. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, that's yeah. gonna pop some serious wheelies. Well, uh, yeah, it is, you know, and I think it's gonna be one of those bikes that's far better than anyone that hops on it. Yeah, but I can't wait to hop on it. I just got back from the launch of this, Takei's Panigale V2 and it is an awesome bit of kit. Yeah, you seem really pumped up about it. Um, I haven't ridden it yet, so the jury's still out, but yeah. tell me what's so good about it. How's the package moved on? Well, from the old 959, it basically uses the same platform, but everything is better. Like they've all, the, well, the biggest change for me is how they've altered the geometry and the bias. It makes it a completely different bike to ride. It feels like a proper weapon. It's got more power, it's got more torque, it's got proper electronics that have been lifted off the of V4 and the V4R. And it now is an actual full-blooded weapon where the 959 just didn't quite have that edge. For me, 
the 959 has always been a little overpriced for what it's delivered. Like it hasn't excited me yeah. in the way a V4 can for a few grand more, essentially. So yeah, I've, I'm yet to be convinced. Like I said, I haven't ridden it, but um, do you think you would honestly choose this over a V4? I, that's what I'd say. So the 959 has never really tickled my fancy. Same as the 899, it never was quite there. But now this feels like a genuine alternative. For, so this is coming in under 15 grand. So it's five grand cheaper than a V4. And although it's 955cc, it's, it's kind of like a big middleweight. It's just an easier bike to ride. It's a nice bike to ride. It's got all the, all the gadgets, all the Gucci, and yeah, it does, ticks, ticks my boxes. So for you, it's come of age? Yeah, for me, definitely, yeah. Much overdue, but it's come of age. Thinking more evolution than revolution, we've got the new R1s for 2020s. The base model R1 and the new R1M are essentially still making the same claimed 200 brake horsepower output. They still make 201, 202 kg. From a specs point of view, it feels like they're kind of just getting edged off by the other manufacturers that are now stepping the game up. But you've got to ride one of these bikes to realize just how brilliant they are. I got back from testing this a few weeks ago in Jerez. I don't know what to expect, but it just delivered that cornering brilliance that you know an R1's gonna give you, a big torquey motor that just wants to punch out corners, and great electronics. So it's one of those bikes for me that, yeah, okay, it's not groundbreaking, but yeah. it's significantly bettered. It's now Euro 5. Yeah. That's the main reason why the power and everything's not gone up. It's got five catalytic converters on it. Yeah. It's crazy to think that's what manufacturers are now having to do, but that's the score. It's, it's not going to blow your mind in the specs department, but in terms of the actual riding experience, it's up there. I like it. Would you be inclined to go for one of these? Or I don't know. I think it's an absolutely beautiful bike, especially the R1M, like the carbon detailing and stuff, and it's lovely. But it's just not quite. It's just not quite there. It's not, it's not as new as I'd hoped it would be. I, I was expecting. I was just hoping for something crazy, something different. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I don't want to use the word it's a stopgap, but I wonder whether 2021 we're going to see yeah. a whole new R1. I mean, this bike came out 2015. Yeah. So and, yeah. It, and it's been yeah, it's been tweaked here and there. I think they're on the third iteration now. So yeah, it's it's been capitalised on as much as you yeah. probably can take this. Time for a new one in the near future. But right now, this is what we're dealing with. I like it. I, I like, like it. it. 22 just over 22 grand for the R1M. Yeah. It's not cheap. Yeah. Uh, the base model though, just over 16 grand, a bit more affordable in today's market. Yeah. I mean, it's still a lot of money, yeah. but you're getting a lot of the spec of the R1M in the base model. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind that unless you want to go down the carbon route, the electronic yeah. suspension route, you still get a great bike for a lot yeah, less money. Quite a six grand less. So, you know, that, that works for me. Mind you, it's not the only bike that's been revised for 2020, is it? What else is there? Uh, RSV 1100 factory. Okay. Slightly changed for this year. Firstly, well, new colour scheme. I tell you what, why did they not put this colour scheme on the model they brought the bike out with? I, I mean, don't that know. just looks yeah. so bland for such a great bike. Yeah. Now we've got a bit of colour to it, it just transforms it straight it's, away. It's almost like an old school Aprilia colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stunning. And um, they've also updated it with electronic Gen 2 only suspension. Okay. Front and rear. Now, I know that usually is a, it's a bit of a hit or miss, but um, Aprilia have been telling us that that's about half a second a lap. So even though they put on weight with the technology? Yeah. Okay. Half a second a lap quicker, they promise us, but we're yet to find out. It should be interesting. I think that the nice thing with the, the Gen 2 Olins is it's so customizable yeah. that you essentially, yeah, you, you haven't got the, the adjusters that you would on conventional suspension, yeah. but you can tap into that technology and adjust it as is. So I, I can believe that, but I think out of the crate, we learned this year, this bike was one of the best motorcyclists to come our way. Yeah. Nice and torquey, great handling. The handling got better than it's ever been. I mean, the thing with me though is, with the RSV4, you're still talking about the same frame that came about in 2009. Yeah, this, yeah. this bike is, is, is technically old, yeah. isn't it? But yeah. they've done so much with it, it's still, you can still jump on that, box fresh, yeah. and it feels like a race bike. Yeah, and I don't know whether, it, you know, going back to the looks of it, I don't know whether it is too dated, or, or not. I mean, obviously we've seen the increase in capacity for this year. Yeah. We've seen the wings arrive, etc. It works, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, when you yeah. ride it, you enjoy it. You see the, the potential in it. Um, so yeah, maybe we could have done with something a little bit sexier from the package for, for 2020. Yeah. But 
to be honest, just the colours is doing it for yeah, me. Yeah, it's a bit better. And half a second a lap, I, I'm not going to grumble at that. That could have been the difference in our ultimate sports bike test this year. Yeah. This is the best value bike of 2020. So 10,300 quid, it's a heavily evolved street triple. It's got better torque, it's got better mid-range, it's got more technology, sharper looks. This is the finished package. This is the, the most fun you can have for the least amount of money. I love it, it's a great ride, really comfy. I was out testing it not many weeks ago. It's a corker. The question is, will this be better than the 2020 KTM 890 Duke R? Yeah, I, I think it will. I think what this bike's got going for it is just nice, easy riding, great road holding, brilliant brakes. The technology on it is really good. There are so many qualities to this bike. It's been heavily refined. Obviously, it's got a, a, a new or well, revised engine for, for 2020 as well. The guys who worked on the Moto2 package have been working on this engine. That's where they found their gains. I think that in terms of middleweight nakeds, there isn't really going to be anything that can hold a candle to it. I, honestly, it's such a corker. It just, it just ticks all my boxes, and especially on price. Before you get too carried away with this, let's go and have a look at the A92 car. We're nearly there yet. We're getting there. Good things come to those who wait. is KTM's 890 Duke car. Sell it to me. Well, it's basically, it's the evolution of the 790. So it's got more power, it's got more torque. It's been given the R, so it's got better brakes, it's got better suspension. They've, they've really gone to work on it. They made it more spacious. They tell us it's gonna be better in every way. I think it looks a, a lot better finished than the 790. Like even looking at the yokes, all being colored, anodized, etc. I, I like that. It does. Looks like they've moved the package on a little bit. It looks a bit sportier at the rear as well. Yeah, it, like almost half naked, half sports bike. It looks almost a, a bit yeah. RC. It looks aggressive, doesn't a bit, it? Yeah, a bit Duke. It's, it's, it's still out there though, isn't it? Yeah, well the fact that they put some proper quality components on it, because that was a few things the 790 was lacking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then, you know, the 790 came in at a, a very affordable price. Yeah. Uh, and that's obviously changed, you know, with this bike it's that, that little bit more because I guess you're getting that bit more, aren't you? Yeah, that's, 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 that's where the disparity lies, that's where it's going to be hard to... When you've got a whole, whole group of new middleweights out as well, it's... Yeah. Um, it's going to be a contender though, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'll give it that. It's, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be a bike to throw into that mix with a bit of, uh, bit of earnest and, yeah, you know, will it, will it be able to be a street triple? take on a Z900, I don't know. I, I think, for me, it's got the ingredients too. It's gonna to stand out from a looks and color point of view, definitely, I'll give you that. I can't wait to ride it. 10.399. That is good, isn't it? I'd need to borrow some money off you. You need to give me a pay rise. This is more me. 180 horsepower, 189 kg without fuel, this is an absolute beast of a thing. I've loved the Super G cars ever since they come about, and this is as good as it's gonna get. Big, exciting V-twin, loads of character. I, I like how different it is as well on, on the naked scene. It, it's done its own thing, it's gone its own way. It doesn't try and blend in. Yeah, it's got You're a making a statement, aren't you? Yeah. Something that uh, I, I think you're gonna have to go a serious, serious way to rival a bike like this but for sheer fun. And probably track performance as well. Yeah, yeah. I dare say that some of that technology that's gone into the new model has probably been derived from what they've learned with the GP teams as well. And when you've got guys like Jeremy McWilliams testing them out, you know it's not going to be bad. Yeah. No, I, I think um, it's going to be a really exciting bike next year. And price-wise, under 16 grand. Yeah. Okay, so it's still a lot of money, but throwing it back to you know some of its rivals that are up around 20 grand or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's it's the right end of the spectrum. It is when you consider that this is the flagship KTM as well. Yeah. yeah it's, um... Mind you, it's not the only uh, new Super Naked for 2020, is it? There's a very special one that we need to go and check out right now.
this is probably the most exciting naked in terms of spec. So oh, yes. supercharged Z H2. That to me has, uh, I'm, it's the one I'm most curious to get out and ride. It's got something that the others haven't got about it. We all know from the H2 and the H2R just how brilliant that oh, supercharged yeah, direction is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just buzzing. I Same, mean, yeah. To, to be honest, I, I was so excited about this bike. Like, everything about it just screams like a super naked should be super it should be, it should be raw it should be brutal it should be fast and kawasaki here they've they've gone the extra mile they've done something that's let's put it in a class well i put almost put it in a class of its own like although we yet to ride it you're you're on the launch of that aren't you yeah i am yeah i'm, I'm i can't wait it's, it's hard to kind of anticipate exactly what it's going to be like yeah is it going to be a bike that's as capable around the corner as the Street Fighter or, you know, yeah. one of the, the more sports, sports yeah, inclined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's the thing I'm most curious about. I, I don't know, but I think when all's said and done, you exactly. know you're going to have that brilliant intake wine. You're going to have that yeah. burst of energy from the motor, from the supercharger. You know, it's just it's just got elements that make it that bit special, that bit different. Yeah. The other thing I like about it is it's just over 15 grand. Yeah. So it seems like you're getting something really innovative and different and exciting for a, a fairer price than, yeah. than some of its rivals. Um, it's a lot of bike for the money, especially when you look at, you're, you're paying north of 25 for the, stat, for the normal H2. Like, that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's got my juices going. Can't wait to ride it. I hope it delivers. Yeah. What do you think of the looks? <sighs> do you know what? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I will say for me, it, it looks maybe a bigger bike than what I anticipated. I think that a lot of that is down to the necessity for a, a dedicated induction. I, yeah. I think, to be honest, they've always made a statement for that air intake being so bulbous on the, the front nose cow. It's needed to be wide, but that, that is, that's a statement. It's, um, it is what it is. I, um, Chunky but funky. Yeah. Yeah, I can always see past the looks because I'm excited about the delivery. Yeah, yeah. So that's it, show's over, back at the stand, feet are battered. It's yeah. been a good trip, seen yeah. some great new bikes. Yeah, it's been loads of good new stuff. Loads of good new stuff that we haven't even seen. Like, it's, it's next year's looking brilliant. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think bike of the show for me, Still probably going to say Five Blade. I'm, I'm going to have to go for that Street Fighter. It looks even better in person than it does in pictures. So I can't wait to ride it. Uh, me neither. More to the point, I can't wait to place my bike against your bike and beat you. It's on.